On this episode of The Severed Dongle, Jordan, Colin, and myself visit Too Many Games, a gaming convention in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Too Many Games is famous for having tons upon tons of video gaming memorabilia for sale, as well as a gaming section and a place where you can test indie games for future release. Upon our arrival, the first thing we noticed was a staggering amount of user-made gaming merchandise. The convention also featured an arcade section where you could play the classics without having to spend any money. This particular section allows uh, some gamers to get into some of the classics from the mall back in the day, back when we used to have arcades. So, uh, I think I'm going to try and play uh, Doggy Kong if the line's not too long. Oh my god, I haven't played this since I was a little kid. I'll probably die miserably. <laughs> that didn't happen. Uh, I believe we have video proof that it did. I did not turn away from a barrel. These 80s games are quite glitchy. <laughs> I may have not mentioned this, but when I was younger, I was also very bad at this. After getting completely owned by Donkey Kong, I turned a corner and saw an all too familiar pop culture icon. That's a good thing, I'm told. It's the first time I've ever sat in a DeLorean. This is a beautiful moment. The Time Machine from 1985's Back to the Future is revered by many nerds as one of the greatest icons of nerddom. The franchise alone was a huge success, particularly for DeLorean, which was good because they were only famous for running drugs at the time. For me personally, it was a huge treat to finally sit in one of these cars as I've been a fan since I was about 10 years old. As much as I love mainstream gaming, I also like to take a chance to see what independent creators are doing these days. Once we reached the Indie Game Showcase, the first game I came across was called Gentleman Robots, and I had a chance to speak with one of the creators from Time's Up Interactive. Alright, I'm here with Darren from Time's Up Interactive, the creator, one of the creators and programmers of Gentleman Robots. Right, thanks for being on. So uh, tell us a little bit about the game. Well, the game is basically your, your two sophisticated robots. Uh, your important world. Mostly all robots, and they're pointing to the same old robot race from a rather young crew computer virus that turns all people uh -huh. uh, a lot of comedy and funny puns that are throughout the storyline. Uh, we also have a board game counterpart for the game that's set basically the same world. So it's like behind the scenes actually programming games after you're coming from. I'm assuming you played a lot in your youth. Oh, yes. Yeah, what's it, what's it like to actually switch to the other side of the table? Very different, very different, but it's good, but you get that whole different aspect of, aspect of uh, how games are made. Yeah. And it just really makes you think a lot differently and have a lot more respect for like every single game out there. Yeah, not, not getting so mad at glitches every here and there. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. You understand the glitches now, you're like, oh, well, okay. Yeah. Of, you know, yeah. Well, I must say, it's a, it's a fantastic game, it's hilarious. I can't wait to try that version. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. After the interview, I sampled some of the offerings from YYR Games and was pleasantly surprised to find an updated version of the DOS game Snake, featuring enhanced 3D graphics, and for the first time ever, a kill cam, which was very entertaining. Like Donkey Kong, I wasn't very good at this game either. <laughs> they also featured an intuitive 2D side-scrolling maze, which you maneuvered with a touchscreen. As it turned out, I wasn't very good at that either. 
I'm starting to think I should just stick with games on the PSN, or Xbox Live Marketplace. Which brings me to YYR's greatest offering, Bungie Ferret Tossing! A ridiculous game where you operate a helicopter and throw, I kid you not, ferrets with exploding suicide bombs on their chests. Though it is completely ridiculous, I found myself instantly hooked, and upon hearing that it was available on the Xbox Live Marketplace for a mere $2, I promptly bought it when I returned home. What most don't know is that the Indie Game Corner also features tabletop gaming demos such as Hidden Gem Games' Dai Sai Sao. Based on its power-up system, I found it very similar to Magic the Gathering, except much more interesting. If not only for the fact that it features steam-powered robots, the company featured a Kickstarter which regretfully did not produce the numbers that were expected and they will hopefully try again with a future campaign. Pixel Lincoln! That's right, four score and seven asses kicked! The premier game from Island Officials features Abraham Lincoln throwing boomerangs, cassette tapes, and tacos at, I kid you not, sharks with freaking laser beams attached to their heads. This is without a doubt the most ridiculous but also action-packed 2D game that I've seen in the last 10 years, and I can guarantee that I'll be buying it as soon as it's available. It was also the first game that I actually didn't outrageously suck at at this convention, so I was having a great time. Island officials turned out to be the star of the convention with several very interesting gaming options that could be up for future release. Many of them were entertaining and interesting, and they also featured a touchscreen game that I was actually able to play. Upon leaving the indie game corner, there was no doubt in my mind that Island officials really knew what they were doing, and hopefully we will see a lot of their games available for play in the future. So what did I take away from this convention? I really appreciated the amount of enthusiasm on the user-generated content, both video and available merchandising. It's a great chance to get out and interact with fellow gamers and talk about your favorite characters, favorite games, and take home a really nice piece of merchandise. It's also a chance to take home collectible gaming consoles and handheld gaming equipment, such as this gem, which I had actually been looking for for quite a long time. What? Say it again? this and I never got one ever because they were sold out everywhere but look it's just perfection this invention is definitely more geared towards merchandise which isn't necessarily a bad thing say if you have a broken Nintendo 64 however things like panels and musical performances are often pushed onto the back burner despite this it is still an excellent convention for gamers and you should not miss your chance to check it out if you're in the Philadelphia area Between the uh, indie games, the collectibles, and all kinds of uh, inspired art and interesting uh, material, there really can't be too many games. Zach Patterson, Mayor Dunkel, remain unsettled.